Hello! I wanted to just come on today to share my plant haul. Um, I went out and I got four new plants today and they are all plants that I don't have and I've never had before. Let's go ahead and let's start with this guy. Um, I'm gonna butcher its name. Syngonium nephthitis, I wanna say. Or an arrowhead plant is a common name. I've also seen it as the white butterfly plant. A lot of things that I'm gonna share is research that research that I've done. It's not first-hand evidence because I this is my first time owning these plants. So from my research, um, I saw that these guys can deal with a little bit of neglect. Of course, don't completely neglect your plants, but like they can deal with a little bit of neglect. Uh, they can do low to medium light, um, water thoroughly, but then um, kind of leave it to get dry before watering again. Uh, they are gonna become a trailing vine eventually, so this might cascade down unless I decide I wanna train it to climb. Um, I like the cascading down look, so that's probably what I'm gonna go for when this guy gets bigger. Um, but yeah, I just thought that it was just, it's, I love the coloring. I love the foliage, just the variations in the color, the green, the white, the, uh, just the, the shape of the leaves I love. Um, I haven't decided where this guy is gonna live in the house yet. I will tr have to decide on that. Um, next, I have Calathea lancifolia. Quick note, I do refer to this genus of plants in the Marantaceae family as Calatheas. Upon further research, I understand that it can be actually be pronounced Calathea or Calathea, but for the rest of this video, I do refer to them as Calatheas. Um, which is the rattlesnake plant, and I, I will be honest, I was very terrified to get Calatheas. I was trying to shy away from them since I'm a new plant mom and I hear Calatheas can be divas. I just, I love this look. I love the shape of the leaves. I like the mix of the dark green and the light green. And then on the back, you've got the maroonish color. And I think these are in the same family as Maranthas, which then the, the prayer plants and so um, I kind of like that they they kind of come up at night um, and show off the, the underbelly but in the morning you get this beautiful beautiful foliage um, I, I just think that they look painted and fake like you kind of you look at them and you're like how are you out in nature how is that a thing so that is the Calathea lancifolia or the rattlesnake plant. And I got a Calathea ornata, um, pinstripe plant, pinstripe Calathea. This one really looks fake. Like it looks just painted. It has the pink pinstripes against the dark green. And I just thought that that's just, I mean, Pink's my favorite color. And I was like, okay, I have to have her. I'm still scared. I'm still scared to have Calatheas. But I think, I think I can do it. I just have to believe I can do it and just go for it. And if I really fail, then I'll learn my lesson. Um, or hopefully I can find someone to take them off my hand before absolute failure. I believe for Calatheas, they definitely don't like their feet wet. It'll be about kind of keeping it moist, but also um, trying to make sure I don't overwater. Uh, another thing is the humidity. They like humidity, and the area that I'm thinking of putting these guys in, so I ordered some Wally Grow, Wally Grow pots that I'm gonna put up in our staircase, kind of going up the stairs, and it's definitely a shady area. It gets indirect sunlight from our front the foyer we have windows by the front door but that's about the light it gets 
I'm thinking of keeping them in their pots and then plopping them into the Wally Grow so that if they aren't thriving, I can just take them out, move them somewhere else, and put a different plant into the Wally Grow. Um, maybe something that's more cascading, like I do have satin pothos and I have Brazil, philodendron Brazil upstairs, so maybe I'll put those in there and I have my marble queen pothos too. Anyway, back to Calatheas. This is the Ornata or Pinchard plant. And then my last plant for today is the Calathea zebrina or the zebra plant. Um, my coworker has this. Now that we've been doing more Zoom meetings and Teams meetings, um, working from home, I noticed my coworker has a zebra plant sitting in the uh, the shelf behind her or in the counter behind her, and I was like, I I want one. So. I got one. Um, I love the feel of the leaves. It's just like this velvety soft feeling. And this one's sprouting two new babies. There in the middle. It's got the dark green splash again um, against the lighter green. I think what drew me to this one is definitely the feel of the leaves though. Like it just feels so soft. Um, but. Yeah, again, needs higher humidity, so I might try and do the pebble tray trick for them just because my humidifier is in my office and my plan is to have these in the staircase. Um, but we'll see how that goes because first and foremost, we need to listen to the plans instead of sticking them where we want to. At least, that's my belief anyway. Um, I... I might keep these, I don't have the Wally Grows yet, so I might keep these in the guest bathroom for now. Wait until my Wally Grows to show up. It's mostly just because I like to keep them quarantined for a couple weeks before I have my plants meshed together. They get a fresh pot and fresh soil. Um, just got watered. Yeah. I think they're so cute. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I just can't get over them. Um, I was a little worried because my Calathea Zebrina has some white spots on the leaves. I don't think you can see it. I might just have to show you in a different shot. But they got some white spots on the leaves. And I know Calatheas can be prone to pests like spider mites and I'm absolutely terrified of that but I tried wiping them off and they're they're part of the tissue like I can see through it uh, I did a preliminary search and someone had the same problem where it was part of their tissue and just said keep an eye on it and maybe eventually s snip the, the leaf off I don't know it's mainly this one leaf that has it. A few others have like a spot here or there, but they're a little darker. Um, but I'll keep an eye on it just because, again, I don't want, I don't want pests. I don't want them around. Um, now I'm freaking myself out because I'm like touching this leaf and then touching this leaf. And anyway, yeah, these are the new plant babies. Maybe I can do an update on how they're doing in a month or two and how I'm doing with them in a month or two. It has officially been about a month or two since that video was filmed, so we can do a quick update on my Calatheas and Syngonium. I have the Syngonium right here, the Arrowhead Plant Syngonium White Butterfly. This baby sits on a blue console in our front room. Um, it sits right next to a lamp. If you look at the stems there, uh, it, it's curving a little bit because it's curving towards the light. I rotate it once a week just so that it kind of doesn't curve too much one direction and then eventually topple over. Although as I mentioned they are eventually cascading unless I trail them up or train them to go upwards they will end up being kind of more of a cascading plant. I love this plant. It's doing pretty well with the neglect I'm giving it. Um, 
yeah it's since it doesn't get that much light I don't water it very often at all since of course the light is what helps them photosynthesize and they don't need as much water if they're not getting that much light. It's chilling by itself. Um, at one point I was misting it every day, but misting also has some conflicting evidence of whether it really helps or not. For me, it's more of a therapeutic thing going around to my plants and misting them, but I haven't really been doing that lately. It has some of the new growth of when I got it. It's still opening up. Um, I think one or two might have already unfurled, but I can't remember which ones those were. I think it was this one, and yeah, and this one maybe. But anyway, still doing pretty well. I haven't lost any leaves on this guy, or maybe one. I think one, oh look, there's new growth right at the bottom. It's very small, don't know if you can see it. But I think maybe I lost one leaf that kind of turned yellow. Um, but so far, so good on this one. Next we have my Calathea lancifolia or the rattlesnake plant. Um, this one has been through a lot. As you can see its foliage is down right now because it is the daytime. It is fun because at night it does prey. The leaves do go up and um, this is one of mine that really it really shows that off and it's really cool. Um, I thought at one point that it might have had spider mites. I don't think it did. I think I just was kind of freaking out and paranoid about it. Um, but I did trim off some stalks there. Uh, but overall, I think it's doing all right. It's moved around in my house a lot. I should say none of my calatheas ended up being in my Wally Grows. My Wally Grows uh, arrived later that week. And my husband and I spent a couple hours putting them up, measuring it, finding the studying and all of that. And um, unfortunately, that staircase just does not receive sunlight, like, at all. I mean, I had said it gets some indirect sunlight from the windows in the front room, but it, it's not anything at all. In fact, I measured the foot candles and it was like five. That is not good for any plant. I'm trying to convince my husband that we need a skylight there anyway. That might be a future project. For my Lanthifolia, it's moved around. It was right by my humidifier in my office for some time, just as it acclimated. And then um, I put it downstairs next to my banana plant and my Monstera and such by my record player. It started to get brown tips. And I think it's just because it was so used to being next to the humidifier in my office that it was not it was not happy. I brought it back upstairs to be next to the humidifier and now it's more profound in its praying or its opening of the foliage and then pulling up with the foliage. I think it just likes being the humidifier which makes sense because it is a calathea. So that's where it's going to stay for now. This is the staircase that I'm talking about where our Wally grows stand or sit or I guess I should say hang. Um, this was, these are the windows I was talking about that come from the front door but that is just absolutely not enough light for any plant to thrive. This light that you see here is coming from the grow lights of my Monstera that you saw in another video but aside from that there's just not enough light. So I'm hoping some time in the future we will get skylights installed but until then there will be no live plants in these wally grows my calathea ornata my pinstripe plant i think i looked at her the wrong way because she's absolutely pissed at me there she is looking very crispy that new growth is from when I first got her and she has not opened up at all. I don't know if she ever plans on opening up. Sometimes I think it's about to open up and then nothing happens. I've just been leaving it alone, um, watering it like usual. I kind of tend to water when it's bone dry since Calatheas don't like wet feet. And it's by my humidifier. It does not have a grow light on it because it's not. it doesn't like bright light. But part of me thinks it should have a little bit of, of some grow light because... It might not be enough lighting coming from my windows here, um, but half of the plant, so half like this, the bottom leaf looks fine, and oh. The bottom leaf looks fine, and oh. Well, 
So that happened. This is why I've been trying to leave it alone. Because this is one of the good leaves. It was one of the good leaves. I feel like this one was attempting new growth. Because if you look... I'm so distraught right now. If you look at that stem, it looks like it has something trying to form. But... R.I.P. Okay, I'm gonna put this away and not touch it for like a month. So lastly is going to be the Calathea Zebrina. If you recall, which it was only a few minutes ago in this video, um, I was talking about how they had white spots on it that I was freaking out. I was like, is it spider mites or not? But it was part of the tissue, so it was not spider mites. However, it did get battle spider mites. <laughs> it's in the plant for me right now. Um, the first couple weeks, I would I would spray it down with a neem oil solution um, every other day, and then now I've just been spraying it maybe twice a week. Um, I don't know when to reintegrate her back into plant society. Um, it doesn't look like it has any spider mites at this point, but I'm just so paranoid that it's going to touch the rest of my collection that I've just been leaving it in the plant firmary terrarium thing next to haha, a spider plant that was also battling some kind of mite or pest problem that I'm just going to have to throw away because it's pretty much dead at this point. Um, but. Yeah, the Calathea Zebrina, I feel like it still looks good. It's just that uh, I was misting the leaves one day, and when I lifted it, I saw a bunch of white spots and very, very fine webbing. So I picked it up, ran it to the bathroom, um, sprayed it down, uh, wiped it down, and then sprayed it with neem oil. And then now it's just been in the plant firmary. And I'll probably repot it, and that's when I'll feel good about reintroduction. But until then, it's just gonna sit in the plant firmary. That is my update on the plants. Um, for the most part, I think it's two for four and doing well. Maybe three for four. We'll see how the Zebrina does. Um, I, I don't know. Like I said, it's rehabbing right now. Anyway, I hope everyone has a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy.